So, I've been kind of stressed lately, mostly due to the impending release of that book thing that I did there. Hey. <laughs> so I thought, what better time to make a video about stress than when you're stressed. We all experience it to some degree or another, and I wanted to talk a little bit about what it does to the brain and the body, as well as share some of my favorite coping strategies. So when we think about stress, we usually think about the psychological aspects of it, the feeling anxious or even afraid. But there are lots of things happening in our bodies when we're stressed too. Usually the type of stress that we're talking about when we say things like, I'm so stressed out, is actually a type of stress that scientists call positive stress, even though it doesn't feel at all positive at the moment. Positive stress includes things like like giving a presentation to a large room of people, taking an exam, or getting a shot at the doctor's office. Your brain may respond to these things as threatening or scary, but usually they're pretty short-lived and you can recover from them pretty quickly. Usually, a feeling of stress is accompanied by some physiological responses too, like sweaty palms or a pounding heartbeat. These are all signals that your brain senses that something threatening or scary is ahead. When your brain senses threat, your body responds by releasing a variety of hormones. That anxious ball in the pit of your stomach or your pounding heartbeat, those are caused by the hormone adrenaline. And adrenaline is essential to survival as it helps your body mobilize energy stores when your brain senses threat. Another hormone called cortisol is also released during an experience of stress. Cortisol works to slow down some non-essential systems like your digestion, your inflammatory response, or your immune system. This may seem a bit counterintuitive, but Think about it. If you're running away from a bear, do you really want to be thinking about how much you have to pee? So in popular media, you might hear the term cortisol being bandied about as the negative hormone. However, it's important to note that despite what you might often hear about cortisol, that it's actually essential for our survival. And we each have a daily cycle of cortisol production. So usually in the case of positive stress, once you've left the doctor's office or finished your presentation, your body is able to recover and your hormone levels return to normal. And even if your stress is more prolonged, chances are that that you've probably developed some coping strategies over time to help you manage your stress. For example, my five favorite ways of coping with stress are exercise. Going running is cathartic for me, but if you're not a runner, take a bike ride, go for a walk, just move your body. Exercise releases endorphins, which are often called the feel-good hormones, and can help boost your mood. Get out in nature. Plant something, touch a tree, lay in the grass, whatever. Being in nature has been shown to be very therapeutic and helps people boost their mood and relieve stress. Playing with my dog. So there's a whole bunch of emerging scientific research on the therapeutic and health benefits of petting your dog, playing with a dog, or even just gazing into each other's eyes lovingly. Okay, that's creepy. But seriously, it works for me. After just 30 seconds of petting my dogs, I feel noticeably better. Sleep. Seriously, guys. This is probably my biggest one, and yes, I know it's hard to go to sleep when you're stressed out, but there's so much scientific research coming out about the importance of sleep for things like your cognitive functioning, your mood, or just stress relief in general. So just turn off this video, stop scrolling on your newsfeed on Facebook, and start counting some sheep instead. <coughs> and of course, for number five, drink all of the scotch. And I have no scientific research to back this up, I just really like scotch. It's also important to keep in mind that stress is really a matter of degree. In fact, researchers often distinguish between three different types of stress. Positive stress, tolerable stress, and toxic stress. Basically, the distinctions between the different types of stress are in their severity, from mild to extreme experiences of stress, their duration, how long the experience of stress is and or how frequently it occurs, and an individual's ability to cope with stressful experiences. So I'll dive into these different types of stress more in a future video because I think it's important to unpack and discuss the similarities and differences between how the brain and body react to different types of stress. But for now, all this talk of stress is starting to stress me out even more. So I think I'm gonna go have some scotch. So what are the things that cause positive stress in your life? And what are the coping strategies that you use to manage stress? Share with each other in comments. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.